All right, so working on the 64 again today. Um, this motor has the heads off already. It's had a cam issue, so getting a brand new camshaft, installing a RCD stage one billet cam. Already got the cam gear pressed on and MIG welded it. Highly recommend you MIG weld it uh, if it's going on a, a a truck that's going to be modified for a lot more power. There, I think a, they're kind of known for um, backing off the cam on the 6.0s and the 6.4s, especially with the more powerful trucks that are modified. Um, so to remove the cam, um, a lot of there's there's some misunder, uh, misunderstandings out there that um, you know a lot of people think you have to take the whole motor out and um, flip the flip the block upside down on a stand and drop the bed plate to do this to remove the camshaft. That's not necessary. You can just remove the crankshaft flange. Um, Ford recommends that you don't do that because um, it is timed um, and if you don't get the timing back on correct uh, you can have balance issues because that crankshaft flange does have a dowel on it um, that also times the, uh, the flywheels the flywheel on the 6064 has uh you can't see underneath this flywheel but there's huge chunks of metal welded onto that to um to balance um so the flywheel flange adapter and the crankshaft are all one balanced assembly um so if you get the flywheel um timed incorrectly it, you're going to have a balance issue so that's the only thing that's the only reason why the the crank flange is not recommended to be removed is because it, you know idiots don't know how to put it back on uh, correctly and then it, you'll have a a balance issue um, when you, once you start the truck up so if you it's okay to remove this I know there's a lot of people say otherwise, but you know any shop that works on these things do it all day every day. Um, once you remove it, um, you, you're going to see a little dot on the camshaft or uh, on the uh, crank gear, um, and that's going to be you want to rotate the crank to the 12 o'clock position. You want to if you're installing a camshaft. Cam has already been removed on this, um, but I'm installing this without the um, the alignment tool. A lot of people use that. It's a good idea to have that, but um, if you don't have it, it's not really a big deal. Um, so step one: remove cam, remove the old cam, and um, now we're getting set up to uh, reinstall our new cam here. So rotate the crank to get that dot at the 12 o'clock position. I'm going to do that. Go ahead and do that now. So when uh, you're rotating the crank on these, just as a side note, uh, I think most people realize this that are working on these things, but uh, it doesn't hurt to to cover this, I guess. But um, what I do anyways is I, um, I just take the front uh, balancer off and that will also at the same time reveal your, your, um, your front seal so it's a good time to, to swap that out um, if you haven't already done so. This one already, has already had it done. Uh, there's a special tool to do that. I use the ones from Freedom Racing. Um, not not all that expensive, especially if you like working on these things yourself or um, you feel like you, you might have the opportunity to work on your buddy's trucks or, or you do this for a living and whatnot. Um, but I just 
I just put in some some uh, bolts here and just use like a, a pry bar um, and you know I wedge it in there as close to the the crank snout as, as possible not to you know torque too hard on the threads I mean it shouldn't with the heads off it doesn't really take much to move this thing um, but if you have the heads on you know you gotta you're gonna be fighting against the compression um, so anyways that's how that's how I rotate the crank on these things. On the rear side here, uh, we're now at 12 o'clock with uh, the crank gear. Um, we're gonna, before we um, go ahead and attempt to slide the cam in, I'm gonna clean up the gasket surfaces a little bit and uh, also hose down the gear, the crank gear with some brake clean, make sure I get any particles off that, maybe blow it out with some air. And you definitely want to take your time and make sure everything's clean before you go ahead and assemble. Um, so we'll go ahead and give it a shot. I uh, can't do it on camera, um, unfortunately, just because I'm only using a cell phone and this definitely takes... Um, the use of both my hands so I'll go ahead and attempt that now alright so got the camshaft in don't mind my shitty uh, MIG welding on this thing uh, yeah it's functional but um, yeah I didn't really have my welder set up right and uh, kinda doing it blind with my um, my uh, mask kind of, or my helmet being a little fucked up, so <laughs> did the best I could on that. But uh, this is the correct timing. So with the flange removed, you can see there's a dot on the, the crankshaft gear, a little dot on the cam gear. Just line those two up. Line those two up so when you slide the cam gear in or when you slide the camshaft in rather and also notice the uh, there's a 15 15th 64 um, drill bit that slides through the cam gear and then there's a hole on the other side of the block where that'll line up and fit into so make sure that's lined up I mean you don't have to really do that I mean if you, you want to just make sure everything lines up perfect um, that's kind of more if you were to use the actual tool, um, and, you know, which doesn't require you to remove the, the crank flange, but since we have the crank flange removed, we can see that these two dots mesh together perfectly, and that's all you really need to know. Uh, I actually think this method is a lot, it's a lot easier than using the tool. Um, so that's about it. Um, the only other thing I'll say is, uh, you know, if you're doing a performance build, I would definitely consider welding the cam gear. I'm, I'm most performance, um, 6.4, 6.0 builders do this. Um, you know, they won't do a, such a shit job of welding like I did, but, um, um, I mean... You should uh, definitely um, consider installing the um, RCD upgraded um, ARP crank flange bolts um, and not the regular ARP bolts. There's the regular ARP bolts which are here and they have a small shoulder to them. And then you got these RCD crank flange bolts, also manufactured by RCD, but you'll notice it'll say ARP 2000 on the ends of them. They have a much larger um, shoulder to them that doesn't give the crank flange as much room to rotate. 
So the crank flange will tend to stay put more on, you know, really high horsepower, high torque applications. Um, at the same time, you install these uh, RCD bolts on the crank flange. Um, RCD recommends using the um, some type of sleeve retainer compound. Uh, this is Loctite 640. It's the green shit. Um, use that on the back side of the crank flange. So on the back side of this, there's like a little lip. So inside that little lip right there, you're gonna apply that sleeve retaining compound. Um, you know, give it some time to set up. And uh, that in conjunction with using the uh, ARP um, RCD bolts, it should provide a, a good amount of um, retention to that crank flange. A lot I I've seen a lot of different crank flanges twisted or damaged um, to the point of where you know the flange bolts are um, egg shaped, uh, so they'll just oval out because they're they're so twisted, and you'll end up destroying the crank flange and the or and or the crankshaft itself when upon removal. So it's highly recommended that you install these um, upgraded bolts for any performance build in my, in my opinion. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention here. The, um, the two bolts holding the camshaft into, pl into place here on the, the little plate uh, behind the gear uh, those are 23 foot-pounds is what the Ford manual says and you should apply a little some blue Loctite to those just to make you don't want those coming loose on you uh, you can't see the other one you have to rotate the, the the crank to move the cam gear to be able to access the other one so you can't see that right now but you can see this one right here that is 23 foot pounds and apply a little bit of blue Loctite so once you got your crank flange back on then all snugged up. These are the again. These are the upgraded crank flange bolts from RCD. Um, these are 115 foot pounds, specified by the little pamphlet they provide you with uh, when you buy these. So I like to just mark mark off each one as I torque them down with a little bit of um, like some white out or a, a marker pen. Um, as you go along, if you need to do a sanity check, once you get this flange back on, we still have everything aligned up. We got our little drill bit, 1564 drill bit, through the cam gear, through the block. Um, everything's lined up. The two little dots, as mentioned before, the crank flange dowel, this guy right here, is going to be dead nuts 12 o'clock pointing upwards as pictured so if you need to do a sanity check once you get that back on it's always going to be that way everything's going to be straight up and down the two dots on the crank gear and the cam gear you can no longer see but you can see that the um, dowel on the crank flange is now 12 o'clock same with your drill bit positioning. And that's all there is to it. Uh, as you, t If you're just doing this by yourself, um, uh, as you torque this down, it's going to it's going to probably rotate the engine. So what I like to do is I go back to the front where I have my t two bolts installed on the where the balancer goes. And I'll just wedge in a large pry bar in between here. And that can is basically just gonna wedge itself in between the uh, one of the frame 
frame bars or part of the suspension something that's going to be able to hold it and that should be able to hold the, um, the crank while you torque torque those bolts to 115 foot pounds so if you're just a one man show that's that's how you can do it and that's it I mean cams installed crank flange is reinstalled as as it should be not going to have any issues um, something obvious I should mention is that um, you know the cab is lifted on this you know if you don't have a two post lift uh, in your garage and you know something like this is going to be tough to do um, because you you're going to run into the firewall when you retract the cam out um, I I think it's possible to do this with a partial cab lift um, if you just lift the front jack up the front part of the cab high enough you're gonna be able to pull the cam out so it's probably still possible to do this without lifting the cab entirely um, but definitely uh, uh, you know, a two-post lift to lift the cab is, makes this type of job way easier. But uh, that's about it. Um, questions or comments, uh, just feel free to leave your criticisms.